Uh, hi, uh, so this is uh, Roger Burrows and uh, Evelyn Rupert from Goldsmiths and uh, we're here to discuss um, the paper, uh, well the special issue actually, uh, uh, on social life of methods. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, a few questions and uh, we'll see how we go. So I first came across the notion of the social life of methods as a theme as part of uh, Cresc right. uh, in Manchester. Yes. Could you say a little bit about what that theme was and what the relationship right. between that thematic uh, is in relation to this special issue. Right. Um, well, the uh, social life of methods, we've talked about it as both a cross-cutting theme as well as a critical agenda. And it's uh, a theme that I originally co-convened with Mike Savage, originally at Manchester, yeah. and then later with John Law at the Open University. And basically, we thought about this as a cross-cutting theme because what we see is an increasing sort of interdisciplinary interest in methods um, as objects of study and not as simply instrumental techniques. Um, and that's sort of the cross-cutting element of it. So amongst CRESC researchers, we saw, whether it's anthropologists, or sociologists, or science and technology studies mm -hmm. people, an interest in methods as an object of study. As a critical agenda, we also were understanding that methods are both um, of the social in, in two ways. One, that they are part of the social worlds that they are seeking to understand, but also they are embedded in and shaping of those very social worlds. And to understand that double social mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. was something that we all um, sought to engage in. Mm -hmm. Now, a few years ago, when we were thinking about the social life of methods in terms of our traditional repertoire, you could say, of social science methods such as survey or interviews or um, censuses, we started to think about new um, methods that were emerging, digital methods in particular, as a result of the proliferation of new digital devices and data, especially that on the internet. And we started to think about what this means for the uh, social science um, methodological apparatus. Um, to that end, we, we pulled together a workshop of a number of researchers, some of whom have um, published articles in the special issue, including yourself, yeah. to work through some specific examples of these devices and data towards uh, arriving at some general propositions about methods that we could uh, generate and, and think about. So it's to that um, purpose that our article, the one by Savage and myself and, and Law, um, seeks to outline are those sort of general um, propositions that um, on the one hand could be addressing what uh, some have called a crisis in empirical methods, uh, such mm -hmm. as the article you wrote with Mike Savage, but also towards addressing, I think, what are some of the key interests and concerns of this journal and why this special issue is really apropos for theory, culture, and society, in that we see um, digital data and devices as instantiating or materializing new forms of social and cultural being, and at the same time also new methods of knowing those social and cultural lives, such that these things are all bound up together, and we can't separate out method or theory or social or cultural. And so I think it's really fitting that we take on these kinds of questions in the special issue here. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit then, because the, the title of your joint piece on reassembling social science methods, I mean, in, in, in a sense, rather than just offering the, you know, the critique or the concern about crisis, right. you're making some positive proposals yes. here about what we might actually uh, do, how we might engage. So to, can right. you give us a flavour of, of, yeah. of, of, of the, the kind of positivity there in terms of what, what you're suggesting in terms right. of the set of practices? Well, one of the things that I've already sort of suggested is that with digital data and devices, there are different elements that are being assembled or brought together in um, our social science methodological apparatuses. But starting with the devices themselves, um, if we're talking about, for example, social networking platforms or wikis or blogs or transactions or online browsing or e-government, etc., all of these you could say are various ways in which social and cultural life are being mm. materialized. If we think of Twitter, for mm. example, we could say that new forms of sociality are being materialized by Twitter and new ways mm. of people communicating and knowing about themselves and others. But at the very same time, mm. these devices are also generating data as a source of ways or knowledge of knowing those very social and cultural lives. So it's mm. that dual bit. But how those data are being taken up involve assembling numerous different elements that have not been traditionally assembled by social science methods. For example, we can see a lot of practices um, not only by academic researchers but by police surveillance units, for example, 
or by um, data journalists, where they take up the data mm -hmm. generated by, let's say, Twitter, um, and, and taking up that data are already embedding themselves in the very devices that configure that data that's organized by the Twitter platform. But to this, also um, assembling other elements such as visualization devices, analytic devices, APIs, mm. um, different forms of expertise such as IT specialists. In other words, they're reassembling the makeup of methods as um, assemblages and, and ways of knowing social lives. And it's that reassembling and its consequences mm. and its implications for how we know social worlds that we are interested in. In particular, we can talk about how um, our methods don't stand outside of social lives or cultural life. They are now very much implicated and embedded in them. And this is what we need to address when we start to think and think about the consequences for social sciences, especially for their fundamental assumptions. It's been quite interesting reading in the papers the last few days the, uh, the prison scandal. Yes, and of course, the prison yes. scandal bears uh, yes. a very close resemblance to some of the practice that you've just been talking yes, about. Exactly. Do, we, do we have sociologists and social scientists working within right. uh, those kind of contexts, right. uh, deal, dealing with a very, very different yes. set of analytic issues to do with surveillance yeah. technology? We may well be, and actually this is a very interesting point, about um, these devices is that you know historically social scientists stood outside the social body mm -hmm. and measured it and had control of the data, control of the elements, mm -hmm. control of the configuration of how even the question got posed and the kind of data that's collected. And now they're one of many players mm -hmm. who are mobilizing and using the same data mm -hmm. but for different purposes, but also against kind of the purposes that they are originally formatted for. So we often talk about byproduct data, yeah. but that can be repurposed for lots of different purposes. And sure. Prism is one of those sure. nefarious purposes that uh, is much different than sometimes the very altruistic ones that others might be mm -hmm. taking this data up for, in particular in areas of social justice or development, etc. Sure. So I think that's also one of the complicating elements of these uh, uh, new configurations. But I think uh, that also brings us into question about our own ethics mm. of how we repurpose data and the kinds of uh, mm. assumptions and formattings that we take on and adopt when we use those um, data generated by devices such as Twitter.